Hi, it's Gail again. Whew, okay, well, it's another beautiful day. It's April the 26th or 27th. Oh my gosh, I think it's 27th. Anyway, it's a Sunday, and um, I'm out here again by the beautiful walk, river walk, and I am getting ready to YouTube for hope and YouTube for truth. So, um, hmm, it's been quite a challenging week for me. I was sick for a few days and stayed home and, oh, just, um, was in the Word a lot, spending time with Jesus, and as I was resting, God was still speaking to me, and I was asking Him what I was going to YouTube on today, and he said, well, you're going to YouTube on spirit breath. Whew. And so I'm like, okay. <sighs> so he's been preparing my heart. And as I said before, I don't sit down and write a script out. I just trust God's spirit to speak to my heart. And, you know, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So. My heart is for Jesus, and God's given me a new heart, and so I'm just going to let him take this vessel and say what he wants. So, um, hmm. before we get started, I want to just say that you know how there are great chefs, and we always wonder how they serve these delicious gourmet foods and so you know there's an old saying that says that the um the secret is in the is in the sauce and one of my sisters in christ said to me oh i don't know it's been probably a month ago when we were talking about the word of god and our lives as we've been on our journey she said, you know, the secret sauce is the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, yeah. And then, as I was thinking about that, God said, well, it's the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. So, you know, the Word of God, again, is the Bible. And so, you know, Satan doesn't really want people to know that because... Everything that is written in the Word is spirit-breathed, and the Holy Scriptures say that the sword of the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, who lives in born-again believers, and who is God, is the sword of the Spirit, is the Word of God. And um, so I just want to encourage all believers and I want to give unbelievers hope. Hope that there is a different life than the one that you live. And it is a life that leads to eternal life. Uh, it's a life here that we live for Christ. And we're just being prepared as a spiritual bride to meet Jesus and live forever with him in eternity. So, you know, if you've read my beginning introduction, as you'll know, I've asked God to um, take the spookiness out of the cross, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit. And so, by faith, I've surrendered and believe that he's going to do that as I do this YouTubing. Because he said, you're going to be YouTubing. And you're going to take, I'm going to take the spookiness out for, for people to see. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, God's not going to be silent anymore. He's never been silent. It's just that people haven't heard. So in these last days, God is using his vessels to truly speak the truth in love. And, you know, those who have ears to hear will hear, um, those who are lost will be found. Those that are struggling as believers will be encouraged. And, 
you know, he's just using vessels that are broken and know they're broken and have submitted everything to God to, to let him use us the way he wants to because he's God and he'll use who he wants to. You know, he, he doesn't have a hierarchy on who's the smartest or the prettiest or the youngest or has the best body or is the richest. He chooses people after his own heart who know that they're broken vessels. Um, hmm. So speaking of that, another sister of mine um, shared that we're, we're, we're vessels, we're broken vessels with um, cracks in us. And that spoke to my heart because that's what we are. You know, we're, God takes broken vessels that are sinners who have been saved by grace and who have repented and received the grace of God on the cross through his son, Jesus Christ. Um, he uses the most broken to pour rivers of life in and um, speak the truth in love. He shines his light inside the cracks of broken vessels, that it's not this perfect pottery like the world would have people think they have to be. You know, the, the perfect humanity. Well, there, well no, there is no such thing as perfect humanity. And, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of touch on that uh, again as we hear what God says about spirit breath. So, before we get into the Holy Scriptures to see what God says about breath, um, let's just talk about the contrast. I mean, we know that um, in our flesh, you know, we have we have physical breath, and you know, we're made of skin and bones, and we have all these organs inside us, and we know because it's a fact that um, breath keeps us alive. And if I'm not breathing, and if my human heart is not beating, then I'm going to be dead. I mean, dead. That's it. It's the end of the story. There's no more waking up in the morning, you know, going to the mall. There's no more putting on fancy clothes or no more going uh, hunting for a car. There's no more going to work. There's no more going on cruises. Um, I mean, that's the end of the story. So, hey, yeah, I want you to see this with me if you can. And I want you to, if you can, picture it in your, in your imagination. I want you to picture like this timeline. So, you know, when I'm born, you know, I, I'm born at one end of the timeline in my flesh. You know, I come out of my mother's womb. And then I keep breathing and my heart keeps beating until the point comes when something happens where I die physically because my heart stops beating, my lungs start working, stop working, and I die. So that can happen any time along this horizontal timeline. So we're all, you know, born babies <laughs> and then we all do this walk horizontal walk through life in our flesh but at some point we're going to die whether it's of old age whether we get a disease whether we get um, in a car accident whether whether there's a natural disaster some people get murdered um, one doesn't know the day or the hour that one will stop breathing and the heart will stop beating. So we have this natural spirit breath because that's how we're designed. You know, we were fearfully and wonderfully made to have all these workings of these organs. And, um, you know, we were actually designed to be in these earth bodies <laughs> forever. Um, but... 
there was a situation in the garden that happened and that changed all that. Whew, okay. So, um, so when God created mankind in the garden, you know, he created everything. God is good. God is love. That's who he is. And because he's love, everything that he creates is good. He doesn't create murder or um, he doesn't create evil. He creates everything for good because he's holy, he's love, and everything that he creates is for good. So, um... When he created mankind, and that would be you and me, you know, Adam and Eve were the first mankind, first man and first woman. Um, they were created as spiritual beings. And that means that they, not only did they have flesh breath, um, because God breathed into man's nostrils and it, from the dust of the earth, uh, and Adam was created. I mean, Adam was created from the dust of the earth. And then Eve was created out of the rib of Adam. Now, I know that all sounds um, odd, but God is God. And that's how God designed it. So, you know, the Word tells us that. And in our logical, philosophical minds or, you know... Um, That doesn't make sense, but that's not supposed to make sense because God is God and God is not about sense. God is holy and God is creator and there's only one God. So, so the reality is, the truth is, not the reality, the truth is God created man out of the dust of the earth, called him Adam. And then he decided that it wasn't good for man to be alone. So, you know, Adam went into a deep sleep and out of his rib, he created a helpmate called Eve, woman. Um, but they also had spirit breath. They were spirit beings, meaning that they had direct communion with God through, um, because they were created in God's image. So... You know, they were beings that were in holy relationship with God. There was no sin. There was no murder. There was no strife. There was no competition. There was, you know, there was just this holy relationship between the creature and the creator. And I know people don't like to think of themselves as creatures, but we are. We're creatures. <laughs> we're called human beings, you know, but before we were ever human beings, we were spiritual beings. Okay, and that's all in Genesis. So, you know, don't take my word for it. Seek it out. It's in Genesis. Um, so, before God created the heaven and the earth, and, and it was the Word that created, the Son of God. You know, the Father gave the Son permission to create the earth. And so he did. And... You know, all this beautiful creation came out, and it was all good. And um, in the meantime, in the heavens, God, the Creator, had also created these beings called angels. And the angels served God. So, um, I want to, I want to show through the Word. I want to read this um, so that we can get a a real foundation for how all this spiritual breath came about after the fall of Adam and Eve. Um, okay, so in Ezekiel, um, God talks about, in Ezekiel 20, 28, um, God talks about the fall of Satan, and he talks about who Satan was. Um, before he decided to pridefully rebel against God and want to be almighty like his creator. Um, so he's referring in Ezekiel 28 to an earth uh, prince of Tyre 
um, who is likened to Satan because the spirit of the unclean spirit and the unclean nature is in the Prince of Tyre. And so Ezekiel is used to show the relationship between Satan's fall and how Satan <clears throat> used the vessel of the Prince of Tyre to also be rebellious against God. So here's what he says. And again, remember, he's talking about, even though he's talking about a man, he's talking also about Satan at the same time. So you've got the natural realm. And then if, if let me just show you this. So here's your natural realm. And if you go up, there's a spirit realm. And it's unseen. And, you know, there are, there's the kingdom of God and his angels, his, the beings that he created as angels. And then there's another realm. There's another, there's another nature operating in that realm that's unseen. And that is the unholy nature of Satan and his, his demons who are the, the angels that rebelled. Uh, I think it was a third of the angels rebelled and followed, you know, this unholy nature because they want it to be their own. They want to rule in their own kingdom. They rebelled against the creator. Um, okay, so here's what he says. He says, because your heart is proud and you have said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of the gods in the heat, heart of the seas, yet you are but a man and no God. Though you make your heart like the heart of a god, you are indeed wiser than Daniel. No secret is hidden from you. By your wisdom and your understanding, you have made wealth for yourself. You have gathered gold and silver. So it's like, here's this king that is worldly. And, you know, he's making himself a god, gathering all these treasures of the earth that will make him... Uh, powerful and wise and um, people will bow to him. So he says, by your great wisdom in your trade, you've increased your wealth and your heart has become proud in your wealth. So again, he's, he's relating this to Satan because when Satan was in the, um, in the heavenlies with God as his praise angel, um, he he was not rebellious. Um, and we're going to go on. We're going to see that. So hold on to that thought. It says, therefore, says the Lord God, because you make your heart like the heart of a God. In other words, his nature, this king's nature, just like Satan's nature, is unholy, like the heart of a God. Um, saying, you know, you've, you've uh, rebelled against me. I cast you out of the high heavens and along with the angel the other angels that that followed satan a third of the angels in the high heavens and he cast him out and how could he cast him out well because he's god <laughs> and so you know satan and these demon angels deceived themselves they they were they deceived themselves they for whatever reason you know, God had us given free will. You know, some say that they didn't rebel until after God had created the Garden of Eden. And, um, you know, he gave mankind free will to, to obey him, meaning to trust him. So obedience is just trust. To, obedience never really <laughs> existed before that. Just, just to trust him. Like I've, I've made you in my image. Trust me, and everything will be in harmony, and you'll be blessed. You'll you'll multiply. You'll you'll have dominance over this earth that I've created to glorify me, and you know I'm gonna delight in you that I created to inhabit the earth. Well, in free will, then some say I I, I don't see it. It's, that it's in the Bible, and maybe it's just because I'm, I don't know, but that when that free will is established, then the angels at that point, that's when 
Lucifer, um, who was a, a high praise angel, rebelled against God and said, "And well, in free will, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I want because you you now have given free will." And so, you know, he convinced all these other angels to establish their own kingdom that they didn't want to serve the God who created them. So, okay. So, um, so here we go. It says, therefore, I will bring foreigners upon you, the most ruthless of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall thrust you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the heart of the seas. Will you still, still say, I am a god in the presence of those who kill you? Though you are but a man and no god in the hands of those who slay you, you shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of foreigners, for I have spoken, declares the Lord. So, um... <laughs> You know, the true executioner here over this rebellious uh, unbeliever um, sinner who was following, being influenced by the nature of unholy nature of Satan who was seducing him in his mind. You know, the, the person that was really bringing execution on this unbelieving king and this rebellious king was the Lord. I mean, the Lord is the judge. And so, <clears throat> you know, the king in all his delusion thought that he was as powerful <clears throat> and that he would, you know, be praised and worshipped by people and he would have all this power over people. But the Lord, again, this is what the Bible calls prophetic for today um, with people who are living this um, rebellious nature in this rebellious nature of sin and disobedience and trying to be our own gods and and not having truth in us because we're operating under a lie and the deception of Satan okay so bear with me we're going here we go Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, raise a lamentation over the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord. Um, so the lamentation was over the king of Tyre, and it, it really reached to the supernatural source of wickedness, who was Satan. I mean, even when Peter was rebuked by the Lord for saying he would, you know, slay all the soldiers so that Jesus wouldn't go to the cross. Jesus rebuked him because it wasn't Peter he was rebuking. It was Satan who was trying to influence Peter to stop the purpose why Jesus came to earth, which was to save sinners through his blood on the cross. Um, let's see. So... Da, da, da. It says, you were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So, you know, here God is referring to Satan. He's saying, you know, you, I created you. You were perfect. You had wisdom and beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. So, you know... Maybe at that time, I don't, I don't know. Satan was in, in the Garden of Eden, but he wasn't Satan then. He was Lucifer, and yet, through free will, he then made a decision to rebel against God. I'm not sure about that. Um, you were in Eden, the Garden of God. Every precious stone is your covering: sardius, topaz, and diamond. Beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, emerald, and carbuncle, and crafted in gold were your settings and your engravings. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. You were an anointed guardian cherub. So it is. He's referring to who Satan was as Lucifer 
before he rebelled against God. Um, so he had an exalted privilege as an angel um, guarding God's throne. So just as the angel guarded Eden, um, so originally Satan had unlimited access to the presence of God because he was God's angel. He was the anointed cherub. It says, I placed, you were an anointed guardian cherub. I placed you. You were on the holy mountain of God. In the midst of the stones of fire, you walked. You were blameless in your ways till unrighteousness was found in you. In the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence in your midst, and you sinned. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God. Again, the high heavens. You know, when Satan suddenly, for whatever reason, because of free will, decided to rebel against God, he cast him out of the high heavens. And so um, there, there he was. He, he was no longer... He was separated from God. Um, your heart was proud because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. So he was like he had this wisdom <laughs> of serving God, however the angels served in the high heavens. And he gave it up to think that he could have a bigger beauty and a bigger splendor, which is, again, the vanity of pride and lust. I cast you to the ground, I exposed you before kings to feast their eyes on you by the multitude of your iniquities and the unrighteousness of your trade, you profaned your sanctuaries. So I brought fire out from your midst, it consumed you, and I turned you to ashes on the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who know you among the peoples are appalled at you. You have come to a dreadful end and shall be no more forever. So, you know, I mean, Satan, as Lucifer, had a high privilege before God. Um, he was blameless, you know, before he sinned. And then his sin of pride took over, and <clears throat> that's the fall of, of, of Lucifer, who became Satan, the devil, and all the other angels became demons. So their nature was unholy. It was demonic. It was rebellious. It was full of pride and lust. So, so... Hell was not created for mankind. I mean, Satan, hell was created for Satan and his angels, his the, the, the demons that followed him. Um, so in the Garden of Eden, when everything was perfect, God gave one command. He said, you have everything. I've given you everything. Just don't do this one thing. You know, don't eat of the tree of good and evil, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For in that day you will die. So here we have where, you know, what God created is holy and perfect. It was, it was perfect, perfect environment. You know, mankind was naked and there was no shame. They didn't even think of themselves as being naked. It was just beautiful. Um, because there was no sin, there was no shame, there was no rebellion. So when um, Satan then decided in his wanting to war against God and um, I guess try to prove that he was as all-powerful as God, he came into the garden in the form of a serpent and when Adam and Eve were walking in the garden he tempted them and he tempted them in crafty ways um, let's just go there and read what he said to them because I mean it was all good there was no sin 
Adam and Eve were in holy relationship with, with God. I mean, they were going to, Adam was going to, you know, and Eve were going to reproduce. They were going to inherit the earth and everything was going to multiply. They were going to have dominion over the earth. It was all good. Um, okay, let me find it here. Hang on. So, here's the serpent. And, of course, here's man. And so, here's the nature of the beast. So, we've got the nature of God through Adam and Eve because they're pure. They're made in his image. They're, they're perfect. Um, because they're in communion with God, their creator. And then here comes the serpent, who is Satan in the disguise of a snake. So it's the nature of the beast. So the nature of the beast is, is the unholy, sinful nature. So, you know, pride and lust essentially happened in, in the high heavens when Satan, when Lucifer and the, de the a third of the angels, they sinned against God. They sinned against their creator. They, in pride and lust, um, through this free will that God suddenly gave mankind and all that he created, they rebelled. So, let's see what the word says about the fall. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he talked to the woman he didn't talk to the man. I always find that kind of interesting, that word that people use. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> well, I'm like, why did he talk to the woman? Was it because she was more vulnerable? She was, I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand that. But I do know that he created Adam first. And that Adam was standing next to woman, but he spoke to the woman. And he said, did God actually say you should not eat of any tree in the garden? And so here's the woman in her naivety, I guess, saying to the servant, oh, she said, now she's talking the truth here. We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, now God, the creator, said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, Neither shall you touch it. Like, don't eat of it. Don't touch it. Lest you die. So, I don't know if women really understood death at that time. Maybe she just knew that, I don't know, she wouldn't exist. I don't know if they understood that. But, but the word die was 